In this lecture, we are going to look at an example of infrastructure as a service cloud. Let us uh, look at one of the example. Amazon Web Services is one example that we indicated in one of our previous lectures. It is a leading provider of uh, infrastructure as a service cloud, uh, where several uh, fundamental computing resources such as uh, compute, storage, and uh, database services, etc., uh, they are offered as a service which can be remotely accessed and used by the cloud consumers. In order to make use of this service, a user is required to set up an account on Amazon Web Services uh, website. Typically, they will require your credit card information, your address information, etc. And the account is verified typically by making a phone call back to the user who is creating the account. This is basically a security measure uh, which, which is uh, targeted towards preventing misuse and abuse of uh, Amazon's infrastructure by any malicious entities. So once you have this thing set up and if you want to launch a virtual machine on Amazon's data centers, uh, what you do is like what we see in the next uh, foil. So after you are logged on to Amazon, your Amazon uh, Web Services account, you will see a screen like this. So in order to start a new virtual machine, you can click on this launch instance button. And uh, you also notice on the launch, uh, this, this particular landing screen, uh, that there are several things that it indicates. This first one is this uh, running one instance. It shows that I already have one instance of a virtual machine running and it is attached to one elastic uh, uh, block storage volume and I have one uh, SSH key pair generated etc. Uh, so, so this is what is already existing in my account. In order to start a new virtual machine you will click on this particular uh, button and once you do that and one more thing is uh, over here you need to select a particular hosting region of Amazon Web Services where you want your virtual machine to be hosted. So there are several of them available uh, and I have selected US West uh, in this particular case. Now let's look at the next foil. So once you click on that button, uh, what you see is a set of options which list down the available virtual machine images which you can use to create your virtual machine. So for example, if you notice here you have a lamp web starter it has a pre-configured uh, lamp stack lamp linux apache mysql and php software installed on it uh, if you notice it's mentioned over here and you have several variants of it where the basic operating system is kind of different here you have a fedora core 8 etc 32 bit architecture and here it's a 64 bit architecture and so on and you can also have windows uh, variants of the virtual machine image so after you make a selection by pressing one of these buttons, you can go on to the next screen where you select the hardware, the virtual hardware on which you would want to install that operating system image. So you have several options of hardware here. You have uh, micro, large, extra large, high memory and so on. So each one, if you notice, they have a different configuration in terms of the CPU units and uh, the memory etc. So for example micro instance has up to two elastic compute units with one core uh, CPU and 613 MB of RAM and similarly extra large may have let's say 8 ECUs, 4 cores and 15 GBs worth of RAM and typically the cost varies uh, from micro to high CPU and they keep on increasing as you request more resources. Okay, so once you make a selection here, you can go to the next one to configure your uh, network access. In this case, we would like to be able to SSH into the VM that we create. So for that, you need to specify a security group. Security groups basically uh, let the cloud infrastructure uh, at Amazon know that which port of your networking infrastructure you want to be able to connect with for your virtual machine access. So we have specified SSH TCP at 22 port number. 
going to the next screen after you have uh, finished the wizard uh, as we were seeing earlier you will be able to locate your machine and see its status and further details like for example you have the Amazon uh, Web Services uh, DNS name for your machine and uh, on the top grid you see the instance ID and the state etc and you can see further information by going to various tabs here now from my local machine I can use the same URL which I saw earlier over here uh, this particular URL that I have highlighted to connect to my uh, this machine via SSH so I open a shell on my Linux box here which is a Debian machine and I simply specify the the key that I had generated earlier so once you register you are able to create an SSH key which you can download onto your local machine and specify as a parameter to the SSH command here uh, and that should help you connect remotely to your VM using SSH without specifying any password so right now if you see this is a shell prompt in my virtual machine okay so in order to look at how much usage uh, of the resources you have done you could go to the billing section of your account at Amazon and look at how much resources uh, how many resources you have consumed and how much charges that has been uh, incurring for you so these details are available here you can see you know in my case I have used uh, on US West region a medium instance uh, for 575 hours and it has costed me so much amount of money and so on just to summarize what we have seen so infrastructure as a service provides basic computing resources as a service these computing resources include your storage networking and compute etc which is typically offered as a virtual machine which has some operating system running on it installed on it so that you are able to remotely connect to that machine because just plain hardware you cannot do anything with you have to have some operating system installed on it in order to make some use of that uh, infrastructure so that's why you have the VM typically offered to you as a unit of uh, uh, as a as a basic unit that is offered to you in the infrastructure as a service cloud and consumer as a consumer you are able to install any uh, operating system or any software on top of this uh, virtual machine and it is your responsibility to make sure that the operating system is properly secured and patched and your application software which is installed that also is updated and so on so that is not the cloud vendors responsibility it is your job to make sure that operating system is appropriately set up secured and updated typically an infrastructure as a service vendor will provide some value added services for example auto scaling and load balancing and replication etc auto scaling means that as a consumer you will be able to specify certain rules uh, which using which uh, the cloud vendor can automatically add more resources to your virtual machines or even start more instances of your uh, virtual machines if let's say the load on your application uh, which is running in that virtual machine increases so that's pretty much it in this uh, short introduction to an example of uh, infrastructure as a service so as a homework I would suggest that you try creating uh, an account on Amazon Web Services or even Google uh, and try to play with it create some virtual machines and see how long it takes from the time you register and finally when you're able to log on to that virtual machine using SSH for example